Hey, Kevin, what are you looking at? Oh, this, this here is old school. Uh, had a guy a while back ask, what were your first tools? I mean, what did you have when you started? How did it progress? You know, what did you get and when and why? So uh, this, is, this is the fourth installment, and this is what I got next. This is a coal-fired forge, just like they used to use in the railroads. And I got it because I was working on a fence out in front of a house called Tenacity, because it took six months or so to finish the darn thing. And go out to the website, you can see it out there, Tenacity. And I wanted this for uh, to heat the one inch thick rod that I was using because I was burning up so much oxygen and acetylene trying to use the rosebud and work along a 10 foot long panel at one time. So this is the fire pot here, cast iron, uh, eight inch steel or three eighths of an inch steel for, for the rest of the, of the body of it itself. And there's a little flue down inside, a little damper where you can uh, break up the clinkers. You know what clinkers are? Tell us. Okay. Clinkers are what you get left over from when you burn the coal. It's all the impurities in the coal. It settles to the bottom and it actually forms into this little... Hang on, I'll get one. Okay, so this is a clinker. This is what would form in the bottom of the fire pot after the coal is burned down some. And it's all the impurities that are burning out of the coal. And you look here and you can see, well, this is actually a piece of iron. And here's where the iron was melting. This is actually a railroad spike. They got lost in the bottom the last time I was running the forge and I was bending spikes. It just got all the way down in the very bottom and just sat there and burned and burned and burned and it just finally melted the whole darn thing. But you can see how fragile it is. You know, it, it just wants to fall apart as you touch it. Like that. <laughs> so that's the whole fire pot. Now, if you look over here, just if you look here, here's a little electric blower with the fan inside and a rheostat variable rheostat from really slow to really, really fast. So you can just plug it in rather than like the good old days where you sit there with a bellows or a hand crank to, to run the blower. This one's just all electric. So all you have to do is tan your fire and do your work. And down here on the very bottom, down here is a little trap door in the bottom of the fire pot. So every now and again, you just open that door and all the ash and the clinkers and, and rocks and whatever just fall out. Put a little metal pail down there. That's really, really important. A metal pail, not a plastic one. And they're done that. <laughs> and, Where, where'd you get the forge? I uh, bought this online from a company called Centaur, Centaur Forge. They're up uh, South Dakota way, I think. You, know, you, you can find them online. Uh, the po coal is actually out of Pennsylvania. They call it Pocahontas coal. And it's a really, really low sulfur count. So it doesn't stink as bad. It doesn't smoke as bad. But something you have to have with, an with, a, with a forge is an anvil. So that's the other thing we got at the same time. So now this is an old um, blacksmith anvil. There was a school here in, in Phoenix that went out of business, a blacksmithing school, and found this in the back room. And you can see the big horn for shaping, hor uh, shaping horseshoes. These are hardy holes. And this is a hardy. Lots of different shapes, different styles, lengths, what have you. And actually this one goes in the anvil outside. I just keep it in here so it doesn't get all rusty but it would fit down in that hole when you want to shape something. If you got a, you know, a really weird shaped horseshoe you're trying to make or a weird shaped piece you're working on, that's what you do. You could change the shape of the anvil, basically. Anywhere from uh, about five pounds. This one is 105 pounds. 
I have seen them up to as high as a thousand pounds. Of weight? I mean, that's of, what it weighs? Of weight, of an anvil. A thousand pounds worth of anvil. I mean, it was a monster. Mounted to a metal metal bench, basically, with a uh, big post full of sand to help weight it down. Help keep everything where it's supposed to be so it doesn't walk around when you're trying to use it. Lots of different hammers. Uh, Blacksmithing hammers for when you're like pounding on railroad spikes or you're trying to shape something that's uh, you're doing your preliminary shaping basically. This is called a flattening hammer. Nice flat surfaces on either end made to strike flat down on the anvil or on the piece that you're working on, never at an angle because you don't want to put a dent in it. You're just trying to flatten it and stretch it out. little picking hammer for working in the corners, for doing little detail work, for, you know, small little head for when you don't want to, you don't want to wail on it, you just want to tap it, just work at it, just smooth it out a little bit. Now these are tongs that I would use in the forge, and you can tell this one's been used a lot, for holding round stock different sizes of round stock, small wire, you know, those smaller gauges, all different shapes and sizes. One of the first things a, a blacksmith apprentice would wind up doing or have to do in the old days was you'd have to make your own tongs. You'd have to make your own hammer. You know, you're going to make your own tools. That's how you learn to become a blacksmith. Make your own tools. So that's what came next. Next time, we'll talk about a different tool. I'll talk to you later. Bye.